Hello, everyone. Welcome to Lump Basics. We are now in episode 44. Let's welcome our first presenter, Sardino Vinimiero, Certified Associate Acupuncturist from Legaspi. Good afternoon, Sardino. Hey, uh, good afternoon, Doc. Good afternoon po sa lahat. Now we continue with Lump Basics. Uh, we have the tower diagrams. While describing the imbalanced states, we need to understand the terminology used so that the treatment aspect becomes clear to us. It would also help us to understand the dynamics of the interrelationship of yin and yang and their extensions. So we have the figure below which shows the extended picture of yin and yang. First, we have the blood, the yin, the yang, and qi. This is the common terminology in traditional Chinese medicine, and it has long been my wish, sabi ng authors, to put this into four towers as I first did with yin and yang. I believe that it, if one can see the imbalance, one can treat it better, and that each imbalance has a specific way of being balanced. It is important to understand the rules. The rest is easy. The most difficult part of our job is to make the correct diagnosis, to make the correct picture of imbalance. In the illustration above, the yin and blood are both the extension of yin and as are yang and qi. But they are not the same. The imbalance in each of them cause different problems and should be treated differently. An understanding in this will will make a world of difference of our understanding of TCM in treatment with acupuncture. So first we have the blood. The blood stands for red blood and if there is sufficient blood elsewhere. Blood also means nutrition without which can any organ or tissue cannot continue to function and would soon become exhausted. As blood also moistens tissue, a blood deficiency would cause a lack of moisture. As blood is also a thick fluid in the body, it can cause or lead to dampness or stagnation. Next, we have the yin, which is the amount of water and thin fluid that irrigates an organ or tissue. Yin is also the substance and structure of an organ or tissue which shrinks or collapses without continuous supply of blood and fluid. Yin has the ability to cool the organs and tissues of the body. A yin deficiency would cause dryness and heat symptoms. Next, we have the yang, which is the warm that can bring blood and energy flow to a part of our body. Warm helps to accelerate function of organs, without which they would slow down. Yang deficiency causes coldness and cold-related symptoms in the body. It would also cause retardation of the function of the organs. Next, we have the qi, which is the functional part of the yang, which is necessary for every organ, so it can perform its role. The functions are circulation, dispersion, elimination, and absorption, blood synthesis, firming, and folding. A qi deficiency in an organ can cause stagnation of fluid or blood flow or it could result in a retention of stool or water. It would produce malabsorption symptoms such as diarrhea after meals or diabetes mellitus. Subblood, if there is a deficiency, can cause uh, paleness, dizziness, numbness, which improve with activity, weakness and tiredness following work, poor memory and sleep and blurred vision. So yin deficiency causes dryness and heat symptoms such as hot pain, hot flashes, restlessness, night sweating, and low fever, tachycardia, etc. If there is a yang deficiency, this could cause coldness, cold pains in muscles and joints, cold disease in the interior, paleness, and some clumminess, all symptoms that improve in a warm climate. Sa chi naman, besides symptoms of stagnation and retention, chi deficiency can also cause leakage symptoms 
such as cold, sweating, incontinence of urine, or stool. It can also it 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 can result in a loose connective tissue and muscle, cause sagging skin or prolapse of internal organs. Thank you for your attention. Thank you very much, Sir Dino. Now let's talk about palpation. Okay, um, we have started with uh, how to use pulse diagnosis. You use the index, middle, and ring finger to palpate the pulse at the radial artery. Imagine that the fullness you feel under each of these fingers will give you an indication about the energy status in these warmers. Under normal circumstances, these three positions should have the same fullness. There are factors that could influence them otherwise. For instance, if the patient had just eaten a full meal, the middle position would be fuller than the rest. The consumption of coffee would make the upper warmer seem stronger, but this effect would not last for long. You should not check the pulses of a patient soon after a meal. The best time would be mornings before breakfast. But this is not always possible, obviously. So after a light meal and no stimulants. Many patients are on regular medication like beta blockers, steroids, diuretics, which would influence the pulse negatively. And this cannot be helped. Example, suppose a patient comes to you with a severe stomach pain and you are convinced that the stomach yang is in excess. You try several times to sedate the stomach yang without any success. You then decide to do pulse diagnosis on the patient and come across a pulse as in the picture that you shall see later. You notice that the middle warmer is very full and the lower warmer is completely empty. Normally, the excessive stomach energy should descend to the lower warmer and it does not seem to have happened in this case. This means you could tonify the kidney and urinary bladder on the earth point so that they will take the excess energy from earth element. This will help the full pulse to diminish and the empty pulse to improve and the stomach pain will disappear. Thank you very much for your attention. Let us call once again uh, Sir Dino Pinheiro for his presentation. This time he will talk about questions to ask the patient. Okay, we continue with the lump P6, questions to ask the patient. Okay, we have here the Academy of Chinese Acupuncture, the form. Uh, we need to fill up the, the complete data of the patient with their name, the last name, and the first name, the birth date, blood pressure, social info, height, weight, the examiner, and the time. So first, we have to fill up the main complaint, the time, the cause, and what uh, makes it better or what makes it worse. And kailangan natin malaman kung meron na siyang medication, ang pain, the intensity of the pain, the description of pain, kung meron siyang headache, uh, history, yung illness, accident, yung surgery, and family. Sa fire naman, if there is chills, fever, speech, mental activity, Sa sleep, yung sweat, uh, body temperature and color. Sa earth, we need to ask about the muscles, the tissue, lips, allergies, yung appetite and taste. Sa metal, yung mucus niya, nose, throat, sa coals, and calf, and breath. 
yung stools and skin. Sa water, we ask about the ear, kung uh, gano'n po ka, kung may deficiency na po ang pakikinig, yung hair niya, yung uh, quality ng hair, yung function ng brain, sa bone, sa teeth, sa vital essence. We need to ask also the about the urination and description ng menstruation. Sa so wood naman, we need to ask about the eyes, yung nails niya, yung muscle tone, and tendons. Sa reproduction and sexuality, we have to ask uh, kung ano po yung um, sa about menstruation, sa reproduction, sa physical examination, likes and dislikes, sa weather, cold, and food. So we have here different uh, elements sa uh, fire, kung hot, red, bitter, kung meron siyang ganun, sa earth, humid, yellow and sweet, sa metal, dry, white, spicy, sa water, uh, cool, blue and salty, sa wood, wind, green and sour. So every uh, element meron siyang kanya-kanyang description so we could ask the patient if uh, meron siyang presence nito, may excess or deficiency. We need also to know about the tongue description, uh, emotions, sa pulse, sa left and right, and so makadi uh, formulate tayo ng uh, TCM diagnosis. So this is the case history, yung chart one design and used in my clinic, sabi ng author. The questions guide me and my trainees and pro and brought their memory so as not to forget anything important. Let's go through the questions one by one. We have the main complaint, the detailed description and history of the patient, maybe more than one. So medication taken, currently taken, um, may past medication, steroids, hormone replacement, therapy, yung cancer medication. Sa patient history and relevant family history, yung past illness, yung surgery, accident, etc. These are as generally elaborating only when there are problems. They come under the five elements so that we could have a preliminary idea of imbalanced states of the elements at the end of the consultation. We ask about the sleep when and how long sleep quality, how one feels when waking. Sa hot and cold, yung freezing or hot easily, in which area of the body, yung weather preference. Pag sa sweat naman, uh, easily or not, much or less, in which situation, and are they hot or cold when they sweat, or is it sweating at night? So, sa pain, any other recurring pain anywhere, not relating to the main complaint, do they have recurring uh, recurring headaches uh, sa look and ask about the location sa head. Sa hunger naman and appetite and thirst, how is their hunger, thirst, and appetite? And uh, particular ng time, what is their preference, temperature for food and drinks? If there is a strong liking of any flavor or food, flavors of food, Sa so urine and stool, yung frequency, quantity, consistency, and color. Sa so menstruation and leukorrhea, need not ask if on contraceptives. How long is the cycle? Is there any pain? When during the cycle, is the pain? Duration of bleeding, quantity, color, and for my presence of clots. Sa so leukorrhea, yung color and smell. Now, we shall go through these questions one by one with the possible imbalances they may show us and how we could proceed to balance these states. So thank you, Paul, for listening. Thank you very much, Sir Gino. Now let's continue with the uh, diseases of the earth element. Let's talk about mastitis. This indicates damp heat in the spleen and stomach. If treatment is started early, it is very effective. 
So we do spleen aid sedation. Spleen aid is she cleft point, so used for sedation in acute situations. Stomach 40 is the luo point. So this is good for edema. And pericardium 6, which is the area distal point for the thorax. Procedure, insert two needles obliquely, both above and below the inflamed area of the breast on one meridian, kidney, stomach, or spleen, depending on the affected area. Connect these needles to an electrical stimulator to a continuous frequency of 5 to 10 hertz for 20 minutes. We can also do ear acupuncture. So uh, we use the points breast, adrenals, shenman, and triple warmer. It can be given each time together with body acupuncture. The ears are treated alternately, one at a time. So hindi po sabay, no? Not uh, simultaneously. Patient can be treated more than once a day. The breast should be pumped regularly during the inflammation. The symptoms improve gradually after the first treatment. Thank you very much for listening. We now listen to Mamlin Galerita of QC for therapeutic methods, part five. Good afternoon, Mamlin. Good afternoon, Dr. Hector. Good afternoon, everyone. So we're on the, the part five of therapeutic methods. For today, we discuss the fourth method, which is clearing. So what is clearing? It is known as the fibrifugal approach. Or fibrifugal means acting against or preventing fever. So in contrast to warming, which is, to, which is for cold syndrome and used to dispel pathogenic cold. Clearing is to clear off pathogenic heat for resuscitation and for heat syndromes. So heat syndrome should also be treated by swift needling. Internal pathogenic heat must be cleared off. So for dispelling pathogenic heat, we use GB14, LI11, and LI4, which are needled with reducing method. Here we have examples of condition where there is pathogenic heat. One is heat exhaustion and the other is heat stroke. In heat exhaustion, there is paleness, tiredness, weakness, dizziness, headache, fainting, muscle cramps, heavy sweating, nausea, or vomiting. This condition is a health-related illness which is preventable. Uh, just stay somewhere cool, drink plenty of water, avoid sugar, alcohol, caffeine, and wear light clothing. But uh, when one is already affect afflicted by this condition, we should always watch out because if this is left untreated, this could lead to a more serious condition, which is heat stroke. So in heat stroke, there is an extremely high body temperature around 103 degrees Fahrenheit or 39.4 degrees centigrade and above. So there is red, hot, dry skin with no sweating, rapid and strong pulse. There is throbbing, a throbbing headache, dizziness, nausea, confusion, and at worst, unconsciousness. If we see a person with these signs and symptoms, uh, we should uh, seek med immediate medical attention, attention for this is a life-threatening condition. So, so for the points we use for clearing, number one is GV or DO14 or the great vertebra. This point is a major point for lowering fever. It is located on the midline of spine at the base of the neck in the depression below the spinous process of the seventh cervical vertebra, approximately at the level of the shoulders. 
It is middle perpendicular oblique superior, with superior insertion, 0.5 to 1 tune. We expect a sensation of local distension and soreness extending downward to both shoulders. Caution should be observed as the spinal cord lies between 1.25 to 1.75 centimeters below the skin surface, which vary according to body build. If an electric sensation or a numb sensation is felt in the limbs, the needle should be the needle should be immediately withdrawn. Next point is LI11. This point is excellent for providing stability in epilepsy, depression, and insanity. We locate this point when the elbow is flexed. The point is in the depression at the lateral end of the transverse cubital crease, midway between lung five and the lateral epicondyle of the humerus. It is punctured perpendicularly 1 to 1.5 tune. Next point is LI4. It is the main point to release the exterior and expel wind heat. With the thread, with thumb and in the index finger extended and stretched apart, this point is found slightly to the index finger side of the area between the first and the second metacarpal bones. It is punctured perpendicularly 0.5 to 1 tune. We also expect a sensation of local discomfort and soreness when needling this point. Both acupuncture and moxibustion on this point are contraindicated during pregnancy. Now for heat syndromes in Zanko organs, Jing well points and mean spring points of affected meridians are needled with reducing methods or blood letting. So the Jing well points in the hand are lung 11, LI1, pericardium 9, triple warmer 1, heart 9, and stomach 1. On the foot, we have spin 1, liver 1, stomach 45, kidney 1 on the sole, GB44, and bladder 67. So for bloodletting these points, we may use... Um, the lancing device usually used for taking blood sugar. So, for clearing of heat and resuscitation, we use the following points. GV26 and the 12 jingle, uh, jingle points from lung 11 to heart 9 per cardinal 6. Um, LI1, triple burner 1, um, SI1 on both sides of the hand, which are needled with reducing method or blood letting. GV26. This is used to promote resuscitation. It's located on the filtrum, about one third the distance from the base of the nose to the top of the lip. Transverse insertion directed upward, 0.5 to 1 tune is done here. We expect a sensation of local pain and possibly distension. Next point is lung 11. This is the best point for treating children over seven years old for tonsillitis and high fever. Uh, we bleed this point for clearing heat. It is located on the radial side of the thumb, about 0.1 tune posterior to the corner of the nail. Perpendicular or oblique insertion is done, directed approximately 0.1 to 0.2 tune for this point is prick to bleed. Next point is heart nine. This point is bleed for heart attack 
or severe sore throat. It is 0.1 soon from the base of the little fingernail at the radial side. Straight insertion is done, 0.1 to 0.2 tune or pre to bleed. Next point is pericardium 9. This point is so suitable for restoring consciousness. It's also good for emergency treatment. It is in the center of the tip of the middle finger and needling is done perpendicular or oblique. 0.1 to 0.2 tune. This is also quick to bleed. Next point is LI1. This point is effective in excess patterns to remove obstructions quickly. It's about 0.1 tune from the base of the index fingernail at the radial side. Um, needling is done through in straight insertion, 0.2 to 0.3 tune, or pre to bleed this point. Next point is triple burner one. It is a resuscitation point, and this point is also the gate of entry. So if this gate is closed, the sanjo or the triple burner will fail, and all of the org organs will fail. So it is located on the ulnar side of the ring finger, about 0.1 tune posterior to the corner of the nail. Needling is done perpendicular or oblique, directed proximally 0.1 to 0.2 tune or pre to bleed. Next point is SI1, the special effect on restoring consciousness and it also has a sedative effect. It is on the ulnar side of the little finger, about 0.1 tune from the corner of the nail. We puncture this sub subcutaneously, 0.1 tune or pre to bleed. So that's all for clearing. Join us again for the next therapeutic method tomorrow or next time. Thank you. Thank you very much, Ma'am Lin. <clears throat> Let's call once again Sir Dino Pinheiro for the controlling cycle, part seven. Sir Dino, good afternoon. Okay. Now we continue with lump A6, the controlling cycle, part seven. In this patient, there is excessive dog stagnation in the spleen, which flows to urinary bladder on the controlling cycle. The uterus is governed by urinary bladder, causing stagnation there, the fibroids. This stagnation can cause a heat reaction, young rising to control yin, the occasional excessive bleeding. The clotty bleeding shows the stagnation of blood as well. So treatment for the spleen, we use spleen 8, the C-clip point, stomp 40, the loo connecting point, UB20, the back shoe point. For the uterus, we use UB28, needle followed by capping, back shoe, capping, removes stagnation. UB58, the loop point against the damp stagnation, the uterus. For the liver, we use GP37, the loop point, circulates the stagnant blood. Spleen 6, the distal point for lower abdomen. Advise patient to avoid damp producing food. Every young meridian, right? Every young meridian has an it point, its grandmother point that will tonify its yin. Okay. So clinical example, we have the controlling cycle. We have a case of a female 39 years old. A female patient presented with fibroids and pressure discomfort on the bladder. She was rather plump with edema of the hands, feet, and face, which improved in the latter half of the day. Her menstrual cycle were between 40 and 60 days, and she tended to have a heavy bleeding with many clots. So, dito sa illustration, yung sa earth, yung spleen, uh, mas mataas po yung, yung yin. 
and nag-control ng urinary bladder na mataas din yung yin. Okay? For instance, if energy flows out of kidney, a yin organ, whether it flows into liver, which is the sun organ, or flows into the small intestine, the young organ, it controls, it will always increase the yin in these organs. This is the deep energy circulation, which means the energy does not change its polarity. For this reason, the controlling cycle is an excellent way to tonify the opposite polarity of an organ. The young organ, large intestine, receives gene from its coupled organ, the lung, and in controlling cycle from the heart and the pericardium, the yin organs in the fire element. So point LI5, the fire point of large intestine, tonify its yin. Each meridian has many connections with many other meridians. Some of these connections are on the superficial energy flow. Some are on the deep energy flow. When changes occur in the energy status of one meridian, it has a snowball effect on all the other meridians it is connected with. This is why clinically we notice that one illness, surgery, symptoms is the starting point of many problems. And this order of disease or appearance of symptoms cannot be explained by the conven conventional schools of medicine. In fact, it is thought that there is no connection between these symptoms. If you look at it from the TCM point of view, you will see that not only is there a connection, but also that these symptoms could have been predicted and more importantly, prevented. Thank you, Paul, for your attention. Thank you very much, Sir Dino. We call once again, Mom Lynn Galarita for the Meridian Theory to continue her discussion on uh, the gallbladder channel. Hello, Mom Glynn. Hello, Dr. Hector. Hello, everyone. Let's continue exploring the gallbladder meridian of foot lesser young. So from GB20, we now go to GB21. This point is located at the highest point of the shoulder, at the midpoint of a line connecting the seventh cervical vertebra and the lateral extremity of the acromion. This point is often used together with a point GB20 in neck and shoulder pains as this is an effective point. One of the ways to differentiate is the pain if the pain is from the urinary bladder or the gallbladder meridian is to palpate six points on either side for tenderness. That is UB10 to GB20, uh, compare UB2 to GB14, and UB11 to GB21. Where there is most tenderness will show us which meridian is most affected. Although it is possible that both these meridians could be painful, the chances are that only one is causing the pain. The next point is gallbladder 24. It is in the seventh intercostal space on the mammillary line or two lateral to the anterior midline. midline. It's needled obliquely towards the Ren meridian. This is the frontal point of the gallbladder and is often and often the patient complains of pain on this point if the gallbladder is ill. Treating this point will then relieve the pain and improve the dysfunction. For instance, a patient with gallbladder colic would show this to be the most painful, painful point. Needling this point would ease the colic. Next point is gallbladder 25. It is on the lateral aspect of the rib cage at the lower border of the free end of the 12th rib. We needle this obliquely towards the rib. This is the new point of kidneys and an excellent point in treatment of kidney colic. The front new points have the ability to cool and calm the organ and to improve the rein nature. Next point is 
for RGB 26 to 28. GB 26 is on the lateral aspect of the wrist at the junction of a vertical line through the free end of the 11th rib and a horizontal line through the umbilicus, approximately 1.8 shun inferior to liver 13. GB 27 is on in the depression medial to the anterior superior iliac spine, approximately three to inferior to the umbilicus. Meanwhile, GB28 is on the lateral aspect of the abdomen, anterior and inferior to the anterior superior iliac spine, approximately 0.5 to anterior and inferior to GB27. These points are commonly used are the most common points of the belt channel, which is an extra meridian, which is especially useful for treating belt-like symptoms. For back eight that travels from back to front, cutting the body in half, or for tightness around the lungs during asthma, or in band-like headache, or even for half band-like pain, <clears throat> as in herpes zoster or migraine head headaches, this meridian would be the appropriate one to use. These three points should be given in combination with point GB41, the confluent point of the belt channel. This particular treatment should be given once weekly for not more than three to four times, and the belt like symptoms will disappear. This is all for now. Let's continue our discussion next time on the dog bother meridian. Thank you very much, Mamlin. Okay, let's go to the last topic. And uh, we shall continue where we left off last time, the Western concept of chronic fatigue syndrome. If the primary immune response fails, enteroviruses can pass to the lungs or large intestine, producing chest infection or gastroenteritis. Inside the intestines, the enteroviruses remain and multiply. That's why they call they're called enteroviruses, forming a reservoir of infection. From here, they can spread via the bloodstream to other tissues, including the nerves, muscles, and endocrine glands. Enteroviruses have a particular tropism for muscles and nervous tissue. This explains the clinical manifestations of chronic fatigue syndrome the muscle ache, and changes in brain function. Parvovirus B19 is a virus strictly specific for the human species. It has a selective cell tropism towards nucleated cells of the erythroid series, which are the only permissive cells because not only are they proliferating cells, but also they're among the few cellular elements with a specific cell receptor. The infection is mainly transmitted through airborne contact and is commonly contracted during infancy when it may be asymptomatic or may present with short-lived febrile episodes. In a certain percentage of individuals, it may be accompanied by rubiola-like exanthem and lesions caused by immune complexes, mainly consisting of arthritic manifestations. So here we have the diagram showing to us the pathology of enteroviruses. So it enters or it uh, is transmitted uh, via airborne. So it goes into the mouth, causing sore throat and swollen glands. Then it goes to the lungs and large intestine. In the large intestine, where uh, it forms the reservoir of infection. And the effect would be uh, seen in the muscles, the nerves, and the endocrine glands. It's a pathology of enteroviruses. Studies have shown an abnormality of the immune system in CFS that is indicative of a normal response to a persisting virus infection rather than immune deficiency, as in AIDS. Although the virus has been recognized and the immune system is reacting, it is unable to eliminate it. 
RRF or the Ross River fever is an infectious disease transmitted by mosquitoes infected with Ross River virus. The disease is typically characterized by a flu-like syndrome and polyarthritis. The virus is endemic in Australia, Papua New Guinea, Fiji, Samoa, the Cook Islands, New Caledonia, and other islands of the South Pacific. Transmission occurs through mosquitoes, both from person to person and from animal to person. The main reservoirs are kangaroos and wallabies, although horses, birds, opossums, and perhaps flying foxes can also play a role in transmission. Factors affecting immune response in chronic fatigue syndrome include physical or mental stress. So always, you should always have maintenance acupuncture treatments uh, to prevent this. Immuno, if you are on immunosuppressants, uh, pregnancy, malnutrition, surgery, immunizations, excessive sport and exercise. Thank you everyone for joining. We hope to see you again next time. Thank you, everyone.